People lately have been pushing TypeScript a lot. I mean, if you have used JavaScript and then moved over to TypeScript, I'm pretty sure you would never go back. But the thing is, TypeScript isn't a perfect language. You have type assertions, you have badly typed libraries, APIs, and in the end, it is just for the compilation process. It will be compiled down to JavaScript. So sure, you minimize a lot of bugs, but you cannot really enforce for a uh, 100% safe type system. So for this, let me show you a real example. So I wrote this application a while back and I have this that's repository file. And here I have this get user debts. So the idea of the application is you could create debts as the lender, you could share debt, so you invite borrowers, and well, you could view everything, who has made payments, how much have you paid to a lender, and well, things like that. And so for that, I needed to build this somewhat intricate dashboard where you could filter by that's where you are the lender, where you are the borrower, where it is pending confirmation, from the lender and a lot more. So what I did here was create this get user that's function. I took in the input, which included the session, the filters and whatnot. And here what I had to do was create a where function, took in the expression builder, so the query builder, so that I could construct the sub queries. So for example, if the user wants to see the debts where they are the lender, then all I needed to do was check for the lender ID and compare that to the session ID. Then if the user wants to see the debts where the status is pending confirmation, then we created the sub query and so on and so forth for the other ones. And for the status, active, archived and recurrent. And in the end, it's just an and of all of the conditions. I then started to build the actual queries. So here total count for the pagination and whatnot. I passed in the same work class, then for the dead IDs, and then finally I constructed it all. So I did the necessary joins. I passed in the work class for the dead IDs that I just got earlier. I then had the order by. And after all of these, I got everything and I transformed it into a usable format. So I iterated over each row, constructed it in a format that my front end could consume and called it a day. That's everything. Now, pointing cases, when I was implementing this, I came across a very particular bug, and that is the way I was building the query for some specific filters was failing. I wasn't getting the data in the shape I wanted it. Now, Kisely and TypeScript were telling me, you are getting this data back, but there are things that are out of the control of just a type system. You can define these super complex types and get great inference like Kisoli does, but in the end, when you run the code, you're going to get back something different, then those types are meaningless. Of course, I'm not saying not to use Kisoli. Kisoli is the best query builder I've ever used. But ever since that day, I realized that you should trust no one and you should always validate everything at the runtime. So for this, what's my approach? Well, let's take this very simple repository. Here I do the query. So this is for creating a group. We take in the title and the owner ID and we insert into groups. Now this is great because we get type safety. We do not need to run the query beforehand. We don't need to do anything. We already get the types. That means that all we need to do is validate this at the runtime. So I pass in the schema. And as you can see, the schema has the exact same structure. Now, the great thing about using that effect schema is you have different validators or decoders. So the first one is the code. So the code simply takes in what you define. So the code takes this and make sure that it is actually this at the runtime. But you also have the code unknown. So you can say schema dot decode unknown and you pass in the schema and now instead of this being the from the from will now be unknown so from unknown to this right here now why am i showing you this well because we can use the code that way if the database schema changes maybe we renamed title to something else we're going to get a type error here 
and now our schema is sent entirely the source of truth. We're still leveraging the types we get from introspecting the database, and so we ensure that they are synchronized at the type level. Now, what do I mean by this exactly? Well, if I come here and say the code, and then I try to pass in data that I want to parse, and this is just an empty object, we're going to get a type error. Argument of type this empty object is not assignable to this one. So now you might be wondering, well, that's nice, but isn't that redundant? We need to pass in the data in an already known format over to the exact same format for parsing? Well, that's the idea. We want to ensure that these two are synchronized with our schema. If we were to change our database, then we should get a type error. Like, hey, you're trying to decode something, so parse something that has nothing to do with what the database is actually returning to us. But what if you want the behavior of sod and the like, where it takes unknown and then you either get the data in the format you want, or well, you get an error. Well, for that, all you need to do is say, the code unknown. And as you can see, the type error went away. Now, this video isn't about effect schema, but let me show you why I use it so much. Now, we're decoding the data, we're making sure it is in this format. But what if we want to transform this data? We want to normalize it. Maybe our convention is not to use a snake case, but camel case. Well, for that, for starters, what you would do is simply do a spread of the object. So you'd say fact.map, you take in the result, and then and you spread it over and then you say created ad is result dot created ad and so on and so forth. However, this isn't ideal and the reason is twofold. One, you need to spread over the object, you need to do this manually and two, it is completely separated from your schema. So if you need the data back to its original shape, maybe you need to send it over to another microservice or you need to respond back to the client with a snake case well, you need to create a function that does that and then synchronize this result with that function. Well, effect schema gives you that out of the box. So what you can do is pipe this through and compose a schema. So you can say rename and then you take in created ad, you rename all of the properties and you do the same for owner ID. And by doing this, schema will first validate this. So it is going to decode this, make sure it is in that format. And once that's done, well, we compose the schema. So it is then going to rename the properties. So now if we take a look at a result, as we can see, they are now in camel case. But the great thing about this is you can encode it back. So take this result right here, so what we get from here, and encode it back to this format, to this structure. So you can say schema.encode, not decode, and then you can pass in the schema, so create a group result schema, and then you can pass in the data again, the original data that you got back from create group, and then if you take a look at the result, as you can see, the type is now created at, updated at, and owner ID in snake case, not camel case. And this is what I love about effect schema. It is completely composable and you encode and decode. Anyway, this is what I recommend you to do. Make sure to validate at the runtime anything that isn't in your total control. ORMs, forms, external libraries, GraphQL APIs, even if you have the schema introspected. The same applies for open API schemas. I would say these are the pillars of a scalable code. Good type safety, runtime schemas for everything, and logging. If for some reason this were to fail, all I need to do is open up my logs, find the trace pertaining to this, and see what went wrong. As simple as that. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.